exciting television series that brings you each week the actual films of colorful adventures in all parts of the world. The golden journeys of real people. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have all heard of the strange rituals known as voodoo. And this weird practice is to be found in that little known island of Haiti, the land of the mad emperor. Now, very few tourists ever get the chance to see voodoo in its most frenzied aspects. It's said that the people there put spells on themselves so that they become other people, or they can hold red-hot burning coals with their bare hands, or they can even put a curse on you. Well, our guest tonight, Mr. Stanley Dashu, became involved with voodoo and brought back proof on film of what he had seen. In a few moments, we're going to meet Mr. Dashu and see that very proof. Down from ages past, the people of Haiti have nurtured tribal rites called voodoo. Today, voodoo is in part a dance, partly religious worship, and overall something unique. No other peoples have anything like it. Is it hypnotism? Is it frenzy? Or is it just an exaggerated mambo? For the answers to these questions, we turn to our guest tonight, Mr. Stanley Dashu. Mr. Dashu, what led you to Haiti, and how did you get involved in this weird voodoo business? Well, Jack, sailing ships have always been my hobby. And back in 1947, I took a trip through the West Indies and visited Haiti briefly. Uh -huh. And then in 1949, we decided that we'd uh, take a real long trip for about a year. And we sold our business in Michigan and bought the big schooner and loaded the wife and the two children aboard and went down the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence River, down through the West Indies, and we stopped at Haiti again on this last trip. So that it was a return trip and you literally packed up your family and left. Right now then, Mr. Dashu, let's see what happened in your most intriguing film. Here then, ladies and gentlemen, is Voodoo. The Dashu's adventure takes place here in Haiti. Well, that's the Constellation. She's really a beautiful ship. She's 76 foot on deck and uh, 91 feet overall. And this would be the proud owner, I imagine. Well, yes, that's, uh, that was me trying to make a decision whether to give up the business and take off on the year as John or not. And it took a lot of thinking and sweating. That's Martha and uh, Skipper and myself were looking over the globe and picking out the spots that uh, we wanted to go. These are some of the charts that uh, you have to study before you take off and get a, a thousand of them on board. Those things have always confused me, I'll have to confess. I'm not much of a sailor, but I love the sea. And incidentally, that's my chief engineer. He's in our business now. He was on part of the trip with us, and he uh, took that shot from up there. He was a uh, sailing master on the schooner for about four months of the trip. Mm -hmm. As the wife said, when we put these books aboard, uh, I bet you'd never read them, and we didn't. We didn't have time for that. <laughs> Too busy sailing the ship to the port, eh? That's right. Uh -huh. so that's a little Christmas tree we uh, put aboard because we knew we'd be out of the country, you know. And that's little Leslie. She was uh, three months old when we left. And here that's we a... shove off. Yeah, that was a great day. It, uh... A day like that must be a very memorable one, it seems to me, taking off on a cruise like this. I should think you'd remember it with a feeling of great pride as well. Well, it was, but of course the real pride was in accomplishing a trip and arriving here in uh, Los Angeles after 16 months. And uh, uh, there's a lot of skill uh, and care uh, required in handling a ship. As you can see, uh, there are all kinds of lines and uh, blocks and gear. This is a, a shot of the Welland Canal. It uh, drops you from uh, uh, Lake uh, Huron, uh, Lake Erie to uh, uh, <coughs> Lake Ontario. It drops 300 feet. And where are we now? We have, uh, we've just gone, we've gone through Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, uh, Lake Erie, and this is taking us into Lake Ontario, and this is the Welland Canal. I see. You see it gets around the Niagara Falls. Huh? Uh, now we've just come through the locks. It takes uh, several hours. Yes, there's a chart of it. Now that we're in the uh, Lake Ontario, from Lake Ontario you go into the St. Lawrence River. Was that a touch of uh, wash day Monday that we yes, saw? Long yes, ago? sir. We had to uh, do all those things aboard, and of course with the baby on uh, the ship, uh, I had diaperitis because... Uh, <laughs> diaperitis. Good phrase. 
That's you again at the wheel, of yeah, course. They... How big a crew did you have? Well, we had an average of uh, four men on board and uh, what the newspapers call a seagoing babysitter. <laughs> Incidentally, this is uh, St. Bonaventure Island, and these seagulls are really something. They fly as, uh, as much as 100 miles in a day to get their food. Uh, it's a very famous island. It's been written up in the National Geographic, and it's a tourist attraction on the, some of these steamers that go down the St. Lawrence uh, River. Well, what did you mean when you said that we averaged uh, for it? See, uh, did you lose any? <laughs> well, Jack, we had an amateur crew. You know, we had uh, college boys and some doctors, lawyers, and accountants and so forth. And uh, since the trip lasted 16 months, most of them, at uh, one time or another, had to leave either to go back to school or get back to work. So uh, we sometimes had five or six people on board, and then we get down to three. But uh, the average was about four people all, all the time. This is where we picked up some lobsters. This is the uh, entrance to uh, uh, Boston Harbor. And uh, little old Leslie, she didn't worry about that lobster one bit. Of course, to, to a seagoing baby, that might make a good toy. Now she seems completely indifferent. There's the uh, lady herself coming up the uh, New York Harbor. And this, of course, is a great view in the in, in New York skyline. It's always terrific. But we uh, only went, uh, we went from New York down to Florida. We went inside about uh, 200 miles in the inland waterway, then stopped at Miami for a couple of days and off to uh, Cuba. That's taking uh, soundings. And when you go in these strange harbors, you don't, you don't depend on the charts because so you don't know when they were made. And the constellation uh, drew 10 and a half feet, so we were down pretty deep in the water, and we had Surely. to be very careful. Surely. It was uh, Christmas when we hit uh, Cuba. <laughs> Is this Santa Claus here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Santa Claus. So we had all the trimmings. And there's a little uh, pup I got for Skipper for a uh, uh, Christmas present. Incidentally, he was killed in a storm. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, and it was really pathetic. And there's little Leslie. She had her uh, share of presents. A little baby doll, isn't it? Yeah. You have to think of a lot of things when you go off on a long trip like this, you know, because uh, you, you just don't go around the corner to a drugstore or a big uh, grocery store or something to get what you need. Uh, Surely. Well, this certainly looks like Christmas dinner, I'll bet. Was it? Yes, that was a, that was a lamb. Uh, uh, some of the folks said it was a goat, but uh, I still claim it was a lamb. And now you're down the Jamaica way, That's aren't right. you, judging from the map? We spent uh, some time in Cuba and then uh, off to Jamaica, sailed across. And this was really one of the uh, most exciting episodes we had ashore, you might say. This is the Rio Grande River in Jamaica. And it's, as you can see, a pretty roaring uh, stream. And, and this was a rainy season. And that's really rain you see on the screen there. Uh, I decided that I'd take a chance and uh, uh, go down the river and skip one to go. So we put a life jacket on him. And uh, it was really quite a thrill. It's boiling there, isn't it? Yeah. Just boiling. Well, they put you to work, too, didn't they? Well, we, got, we went aground there, you see. And uh, we had to pull off before we got flipped into the uh, rocks. Huh? Bamboo raft, isn't it? Yeah, it's all bamboo. Well, here's, here's something you can't show you all the photographs we took, but actually over in Jamaica, they skinned these alligators alive. And you can see the rip down the back of that man's hand there where he started to skin them, and he's, you see he's still alive. They say the skins aren't any good uh, if they skin them after they're dead. Look at those graceful flamingos. They're beauties. And now we're off again. And the storm clouds were brewing. Going from uh, Jamaica over to Haiti, the Windward Passage, we really got caught in it there. We had a, a very, very rough passage. And... Uh, Mom seems to be having a little trouble with well, the wheel we, there. Well, <clears throat> we kept her uh, in trim, you know, that way. Leslie didn't bother her a bit. Although the pup got in the way, uh, we almost uh, tramped on him, and we put him down below. And during the course of the storm, the generator was running, and uh, 
Uh, after the storm was over, we looked for the pup, and uh, by gosh, he was killed. And it was really uh, quite a quite a thing. You see, he crawled out of Skip's bunk, and oh, then he went down. And... They must have gotten along famously. Oh, I, uh, they did. He was a fine little pup, and uh, we had quite a burial at sea for him. We wrapped him in a casket and put a Cuban flag around him. And it must have been heartbreaking for the yeah. boy. She'd gotten to be quite a sailor, I'll bet, by the time this journey was half over. Well, uh, she uh, she had about four or five or six men around her all the time. I think it spoiled her for life. Well, after the storm, we uh, we did quite a bit of uh, checking up and uh, uh, on the ship, which we always do. And uh, we we had a few minor things, but no uh, nothing serious. When we uh, got back to Haiti. Uh, this uh, experience uh, really started on on this uh, voodoo thing. This is a, a very colorful parade. They have a lot of parades any place, you know, in Latin countries or south of the borders, you might say. And the rhythm of these people is just just natural. It's just terrific. And the color, uh, you can just see this film in color. Why you you, you just it just stands out there. French is their language, isn't it? Yes. On the island, yes. French. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of, of, of the voodoo story, really. It started back in 1947 on our first trip to the West Indies in our catch the Royal Fortune. We had met some uh, people in Haiti. Uh, they predicted we would be back, and as a matter of fact, they predicted that we would have another youngster, which was the doctor had told us was impossible. And it actually happened. And, they and it actually came yeah. true. Yeah. This was told to you in Haiti. Yes, in 1947. What is the significance of that heart that they're drawing? There? Well, that's called a, a Vever, V-E-V-E-R. And it's, uh, they have uh, two kinds of gods. They have a, su a supreme god or a senior god, and a, and a might call a junior god, who is supposed to be the intermediary between the uh, supreme god and man. And this Vever is part of their... Uh, Ceremony. This is this is a uh, Ascon, but well, that's the uh, the Hogan or the priest, and he that's a, a gourd with uh, beads and a vertebrae of a snake. And Jack, what you have uh, just looked at is something a, a few other white men have seen. But I'm going to show you a voodoo Kanzo ceremony that never before had been seen by a white man, and yet we were ultimately able to see it and photograph it, as you will soon see. And now, back to Mr. Stanley Dashu and his true story adventure, Voodoo. These are some of the dolls that uh, we had gotten uh, several years before. Voodoo dolls? Voodoo dolls. Which this uh, mamba, which is a priestess, uh, told my wife uh, would represent certain things. The uh, three, uh, three young ones, uh, one dead one, and uh, and of course the second young one came along, and the dead one was a young dog. You see that uh, that was killed. Oh, I see. At least that's the way you interpret. This yes, voodoo. that's that's what happened. That's mm -hmm. what we feel. And she wanted to, uh, before taking us any further in this uh, voodoo stuff, she wanted to uh, uh, a picture of Martha and the youngsters and myself, uh, which which actually used later on uh, as a. Uh, making a ceremony for our, for our good fortune and a safe voyage. I see. Here's That's little right. Leslie again. She's not paying any attention to all this voodoo no. stuff, is she? Well, what happened is that uh, we tried very much to make arrangements to see this, uh, this voodoo uh, Kanzo ceremony, which, as I said before, was never viewed by a white man. And so they told us it would take some time. And uh, we took a trip around to Jacques Mel, which is on the other side of Haiti, well, there, why, uh, we sent some laundry out, and it's very interesting what happened. They said, we have a very modern laundry, so uh, they we're going to bring it back that night. All done. The skipper and I went down. There's a I'm cooking on a native boat. They cook in the... In, uh, <laughs> cooking it in the pot, huh? Yeah, There's your the, shirt in the, in the pot. Right. No, that wasn't the pot. No, no, they were cooking food there, but you'll, oh. see, you'll, see, the, you'll see the laundry. Wish they had cooked it in the pot. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, skip, uh, skip went down the boats and then down the beach and... Uh, Played around and uh, he, uh, this is a beautiful harbor as you can see. And this little girl here was picking up these uh, round stones, and he he couldn't speak her language, but he kind of followed her along. 
and they found out what they were going to do with the stones. How do you get along that way with these people on the different islands where you can't understand them, they can't understand you? Is it a matter of pidgin English, sign language, or what? Well, it's a combination. You use uh, articles and, and pidgin English and uh, sign language, yes. Mm -hmm. well, what of course, American money always talks, doesn't it? You just show that. Well, that talks in every place except one place you visit, and then they wanted, to give, they wanted a penalty on some little island down there in the West Indies. They, didn't know what to do with American dollars. We wanted to get some uh -huh. pounds with it, and uh, they charged the penalty to get it. But uh, there's a shirt that uh, belongs to Martha, <laughs> and this was a this was a modern washing machine that they were going to do the work in. Now, what is this? Beautiful this is this is a contrast. You see the difference. Uh, this is some of the artwork. There was an international fair going on during the time we were there, and, and they had visitors from all over the. Uh, world there, and that was some of the Haitian art. And this is just another contrast. This is the marketplace. They do such beautiful things there, uh, and yet other things are so crude. The uh, marketplaces all throughout the West Indies and Latin America are really uh, interesting. And we bought a, a dress here for Martha. It's uh, <laughs> it's made out of a, uh, they use uh, flour sacks and uh, sugar sacks and things. That's the uh, clothing. That one's made of egg mash. And. Uh, <laughs> You, have to have a, you, you can walk along and know where your dress came from. Is that the idea? <laughs> That's right. This was the boy that did the moderating for us. You have to kind of bargain a little bit there, and he was the judge. Well, who was this lad? Well, we got back to uh, the other side of Haiti again, and uh, Martha and I started to uh, try to find the uh, this Kansas ceremony, and uh, actually took uh, several trips before we were able to... Uh, arrange it. Look at the and, fury uh, on that fellow's face. He's whipping himself in a Well, way. he's uh, whipping the evil, evil spirits away from the, uh, from the gods, you see. Uh-huh. Uh, you look at the expressions on these faces. Those are chickens that are waving around in the, uh, in the air. It's uh, very good luck to be touched by a chicken. Uh, that's what they in the feel. Course of the in the course right. of the well, This right, you see, is the is Kanzo, which means fire. It's the highest uh, right they have. And these people uh, prepare for sometimes many as three weeks. How did the, these uh, people feel about you and your wife being there watching this? Did they raise any protest, or had that all been arranged for you? Uh, well, it had been arranged, but uh, frankly, you saw the fellow with the sword. At the end of the ceremony, because I was photographing some of this in stills, and I felt almost a sacrilege doing it. There's this music, these drums that just go through your body, and uh, at the end of the ceremony, uh, this uh, Laplace, who was the master sermon with the sword, and the two uh, uh, women on each side of him came at me waving that sword, and I thought that I didn't know what to think. I froze. I, I had a smile on my face. I didn't know they were going to cut my head off or, uh, or what, and they finally came up to the... Uh, up to me and presented me with a sword as a token of their esteem or something. Oh, I see. But I was uh, really scared. I, I must admit that. Now, what we're doing now is this uh, this uh, ceremony, as I said, fire. And that's meal, uh, cornmeal, which was boiled in that hot oil. And the first thing they do is the uh, first part of the ceremony, they take that hot oil and the uh, hot cornmeal and make the person squeeze it in the hand. That's, of course, worse than the even mm. hot oil itself. And then they put their feet mm. uh, in the flames. Frankly, it was <laughs> very hard to ha hard to actually photograph it. You know, it, it was. Uh, oh, I imagine. Uh, how could you possibly look and photograph at the same time? Just incredible. And this music it is just the strangest thing I think I've ever heard. After the ceremony, there are these initiates are brought out and they you put a new clothing on which never worn before and they're blindfolded. And then the blindfolds aren't taken off until the entire ceremony is over. This is a mamba or a priestess. As it got darker, you see the, the light from the outside was reduced and the, uh, this, these, we had to shoot these uh, at very uh, slow speed, which gives you even a, high, a more rapid effect in the film. Mm -hmm.
Well, after the uh, Kanzo ceremony was over, uh, they asked us to come to this tree, which was a, a very, very old tree uh, in Haiti and uh, was a, a sacred tree, and uh, uh, asked us if we would meet him there. We didn't know what was going on, but when we got there, we found that uh, they had prepared this uh, viver showing the ship and had this ceremony set up. Beautiful, just beautiful. And you must have made quite an impression on those people, you and your wife. Well, it took a long time because many people have gone to Haiti and written stories about voodoo, uh, which are un untrue. I mean, voodoo is a religion, and uh, they, they're very much against people coming here and seeing any kind of voodoo, even the simple ceremonies. And we, uh, I think, showed that we were really interested in finding out the true facts uh, about voodoo. Because of that, they, they allowed us, I think they, they questioned us for many days on various intervals, sent us away. And as a matter of fact, we had to go back finally with three trips before we actually got to see it. I think they wanted to see if we really wanted to, uh, uh, were interested enough to make this long trip into the uh, flatlands I there. see, they're testing you too, all the while. I think they? that's that's what happened. Well, they had this ceremony of good fortune uh, as we left. As Martha said, uh, she really, after that ceremony, had no more fear of the sea. Well, Jack, after leaving Haiti, we sailed through some of the other West Indian islands and some of the South American countries, and then through the canal, uh, up the Pacific Ocean to Panama, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, and Mexico. And then uh, one early morning, we crossed the boundary line into the good old USA and into uh, Los Angeles Harbor. And by gosh, it was good looking forward to uh, settling down uh, to a new life uh, in California. That was most amazing, Mr. Dashu, and we're very grateful to you for shooting all of that film and bringing it to us on I Search for Adventure. And here with us, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Dashu's son, Stephen, who, as we know, also made that trip, and we've just seen him in the film. Well, Stephen, you were a few years younger then. Weren't you frightened by this voodoo thing? No, but uh, I was a little angry because when they were lighting the fires, they used oil to light them. And some got on my clothing, and uh, I had to uh, stand away from the ceremony. Well, I should certainly think that in itself would be a frightening experience. You were uh, uh, on that schooner a long time, and I know that all the children watching out there would like the, to know the answer to this question. How did you manage to stay out of school so long? I took a correspondence course. Aboard ship? Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. Now, Mr. Dashu, exactly why were the girls' feet fire? We saw that in a film that was very dramatic. And how do you explain why they didn't feel intense pain? Well, Jack, the uh, voodoo was a religion, and the people who get to this last rite you've seen here, which is the highest voodoo rite, have prepared for it for many years. And I believe that when they get to this point, they're in hypnotic state. I examined their feet afterwards, and there was no sign of scar tissue or burn, and I saw the feet in the flames like you did uh, in the film, and uh, I just think that they, uh, they just have some, something in hypnosis that keeps that fire from burning. Mm -hmm. Now, you've settled in California. What kind of business did you go into? Well, I went back into business machines. We call our company uh, Dash U Business Machines. We build uh, automatic computing equipment and writing machines. But well, we have a small new development, Jack, which I'd like to show you, an identification and writing tag. And we have your name and and title of your show here, and you just take this uh, plate, <clears throat> no matter where it is, and you can write with it automatically, just like this. And there it is. Well, since this is made out to me personally, I'd like to keep it, and I thank you very much for it. Now, one final question, Mr. Dashu. Will you and the family be making another trip soon? Yes, I think uh, within a year or so, we're buying another schooner shortly, and we hope to make the South Seas next time. We want to thank you, Mr. Dashu, for having brought us a truly different kind of adventure. Many thanks again. In a moment, means from next week's exciting adventure, first, this brief but important message. <laughs>